okay, uh, of uniform density So insulating sphere of uniform charge density is like this. Now the difference is with insulating sphere, it's made up of some kind of material where if, it's, if you place charge on it, the charge stays where you place it. So let's say you place charge uniformly distributed so it's uniformly distributed throughout the sphere. Now I want you to find the electric field outside of the sphere and inside of the sphere. What's the electric field for R is greater or same as R and for R less or the same as R? Okay. Now if you apply Gauss's law to the outside, to the outside right here, Notice it's not going to make a difference uh, whether or not it is insulating or conducting. So you draw, uh, you write down Gauss's law again, E dot dA is Q enclosed over E0. And then the E dot dA still becomes EA. And the Q enclosed is just the total charge of the sphere. In other words, when you're outside of the sphere, you don't care if the Q enclosed is only on the surface or if it's distributed throughout the uh, object. You don't care about the distribution of the charge. See, Gauss's law is telling you the electric flux only depends on the total charge, not its distribution. You don't care about its distribution. As long as it's a, it's a spherical charge, doesn't matter if it's on the outside or the inside. So it still get the same answer. So the same answer, KQ over R squared. Now, so if you're outside of an insulating sphere, it still looks like a point charge. But how about if you're inside? If you're inside, Again, you apply Gauss's law. The left side is still going to come out EA. That doesn't change. The only thing that will change is what? The enclosed charge here inside of the little surface here. Here is Q enclosed. The enclosed charge inside of that is not going to equal to the total charge of the sphere, right? The, the total Q. So here where we have KQ over R squared, that's the total charge, right? So this Q enclosed is, uh, uh, is equal to just the charge of just that portion. So here's the argument you we're going to make. We're going to say if the, uni if the charge uh, density is uniform, uniform charge density, then the ratio of Q enclosed to Q is equal to what? The ratio of their volumes. Because this is a three-dimensional uh, object, right? If it's a uniform charge density, the ratio of the charges is equal to the ratio of their volumes. So, 4 thirds pi r cubed over 4 thirds pi big R cubed. Okay? So then we come up with a formula here where we say Q enclosed uh, is equal to R cubed over big R cubed times big Q. So in, in other words, if you uh, if you if R is half of uh, big R, if uh, if uh, what does this tell us? If uh, R is half of big R, 
then the Q enclosed is what? Half cubed is one eighth, right? One eighth of the whole charge. So in other words, if you have an equal distribution of charge inside of half the radius, half the sphere, you have only one eighth of the charge that's enclosed. Because uh, most of the charge, one eighth of it is gonna be here, then the most of the charge is gonna be here because there's more volume on the outside, you see? So that's kind of uh, from the geometry of a sphere, okay? So then you take this and you substitute it here, E times A, now which A is this? Is it the big A or the little A? It's always the A where you're trying to find the E. It's the A where you're trying to find the E. So in other words, it's the little A here, you see? So the, uh, it's the surface area of the small Gaussian surface, E times four pi R squared. And then the Q enclosed, you put R cubed over big R cubed times uh, E zero, and then the big Q, okay? So now you're gonna get uh, four pi squared is gonna come here, R squared is gonna cancel this, and then I'm gonna get uh, one over four pi E zero Q, uh, R over R cubed. Now again, I can substitute K is one over four pi E zero, So here is the formula for the electric field inside of a sphere. Now, one of the things that you can check if you did it right, when you put R equals to zero, what answer should you get? If you did it right, the electric field at the center should be zero. So the electric field inside, uh, if you go inside of the sphere, and even if the sphere is all charged up, even if there's charge or distributed all around, if you stay right there at the center, then you're safe. Everything pushes you in equal amounts, okay? The same thing is true about a planet. If you go to the center of the planet, even if the planet is not hollow, even if the planet is, has something in there, if you go to the center of a planet, you will weigh zero pounds. Same thing for the Earth. If you go to the center of the Earth, you weigh zero pounds, okay? So uh, that is checking out. Uh, little r equals zero, so that checks out. And then the other thing you can check to see, if you put uh, r equals to big R over here, what should you get? You get to the surface of the sphere, and then the electric field should behave like the point charge, okay? So uh, the answer should be uh, little r is big R. So big R cancels one of the uh, R cubes here. You get uh, KQ over R squared. You see? And so it does work out. So we could graph this now. We could uh, present the graphical representation of this. the electric field as a function of R for a sphere. It increases linearly uh, until you get to big R is a function of little r. And the biggest electric field for a charge is at its surface, kq over r squared. kq over r squared. After that, the electric field of a charge decreases as uh, 1 over r squared. That's the answer. The electric field inside of the sphere increases uh, linearly, then it goes psh, one over R squared. This is if the sphere is uniformly charged. Okay, now we're gonna do non-uniform charge now, example three. 